Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AED744. So today, guys, we do my um, Africa Cup of Nations. Um, I think it's day seven review. I've been kind of losing track of the days, um, if you guys couldn't tell. But yeah, I think it's day seven. I'm pretty sure it's day seven. So we're going to go look at today's games, man. Let's start with the first game, which you got here is Cape Verde 3, Mozambique nil. Cape Verde, man, take a flipping bow. Because when many people did the group stage predictions, a lot of people said at eh, third, maybe even last. I saw even some people put them last. Which I thought was incredibly disrespectful. And the fact that they managed to qualify for the round of 16 is it's incredible in itself. Well, it's not really that stunning. But the fact that they topped the group is actually incredible. Like, it was absolutely insane. We'll talk about this. Mozambique, man, this was a disaster class. This was a disaster class. And I think that Egypt game for me... I think it might have been more of Egypt screwing things up rather than them being good. But yeah, anyways, let's start with the first goal. Bebe, man. What a goal that was. Um, I think his name is, yeah, Bebe, the striker, man. Former Man United player. Scored a fantastic free kick there. I got to ask questions about the goalkeeper that Arnon should have done a lot better there in goal. He actually palmed it and straight the goal because I believe he could have saved it. But, you know, it didn't go in. On the second goal, man. Oh, my jeez. Terrible mistake from Doe. I think, yeah, Doe is a, Doe is a center back. Mendes. Uh, pounces upon it. He takes too much time on the ball. Just like you know, just make a pass, man. Puts too much time. Men Mendes tackles him and scores a goal to make it two 0 And at this point, I'm like, yeah, it's over for Mozambique. Then the third goal was scored by a nice, nice goal there. Lenny scored the goal there. It was a nice, nice, well worked goal to make it three 0 Um, and yeah, it was a very well goal, well, well worked goal. And for Mozambique, man, they just didn't create any notable opportunities. Vosalina didn't really have to make any big saves. And Mozambique were just terrible. They were just simply bad on the day. I was really, really disappointed. And yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. This was a really nice goal. The third goal was very nice. Look at the way. Regular play. Very, very nice goal. The 69th minute. And yeah, man. Free kick there. And yeah, Mendes, man. So yeah, for uh, Mozambique, man, didn't really create enough opert notable chances. I mean, look at the chance here. I mean, because I look at the shots they took in this game. 95th minute, that's like a desperation shot. Straight at the keeper, I think. Hit the post. Yeah, 59th minute, they were close to scoring there, to be fair. 59th. And K. Verde uh, almost scored. Duarte scored. Almost could have scored there. And yeah, so I'm trying to see any other chances they had. Yeah, I mean, like I said, man. Most of the big were just really, really bad on the day. And K. Verde, man, were clinical. Clinical, clinical, clinical. And this is an amazing achievement for them to top the group in the process. And they'll be playing against a third place team from either groups A, C, or D. So it's going to be interesting to see which one they get. Um, indeed. So it's going to be very, very interesting. So shout out to Cape Verde, man, for proving a lot of people wrong and um, showing up, man. Showing up, you know. Moving on to the next game we got here. It is. um, We got Senegal 3, Cameroon. I. Where do I even begin with this game? We're going to have to have Onana discussion, guys. We have to have an Onana discussion. Because, my goodness me, Andre Onana, you... I, I have a lot to say about this game. Let's start with the first Let's start with the first goal, man. Senegal. So, each one also our scores. Onana punches it out. And for the first goal, I feel like, okay, he should have just caught it. You know, I feel like he... You know, I'm not going to directly blame him for the first goal. But he could have done better, man. He could have done better. Ishmael Sar scores. Very, very nice, uh, good goal. Pepe Sar gets an assist there. You know, young, young prospect heading into um, AFCON. And at that point, I'm like, okay. Maybe they do something. Then the second half was a bit dry. Senegal had their chances. And, um, you know, Cameron didn't really create anything. You can see right here, it was a very, very even game in the 71st minute, man. Onana, what are you doing? What are you doing for the second goal? Why are you just standing there, not even trying to bother to make a save? Now, I know Senegal, I know Cam, I know he blamed the defense, and the defense was at fault. I do think the defense was ball-watching, and the fact you gave him so much space and time to give that kind of goal was terrible. And Ishmael also, once again, got the assist for that goal. But, man, it's just really bad, man. Then um, Diallo scored the striker, and then, uh, and then Cameroon did get one back right um, uh, right there from the corner. Really, really good header there from the near post. Nichem gets the assist, and Tuanchito gets um sorry um Pesciato gets a goal there to make it 2-1 and then Cameron had another chance to score to make it 2-2 another chance to make it 2-2 uh, really really good set piece there that was agonizingly wide and then of course 
Cam Senegal score in stoppage time to make it 3 1. Sadio Mane scores. It's a very, very tame shot, and I don't know what I don't know what um, Onana's doing. Onana should have done way better for those goals. Now I'm not saying he was directly at fault for this game. He didn't make any large, large errors. But man, he should have dived a bit more. And you can see right here, he didn't make a single save. He didn't make a single save on the day, guys. Which is awful. Which is really, really bad. He was terrible on the day. I also blame the defense. The defense was also brickerish. Um, you know, and there were like I said, they were just terrible. And for Rigobard's song, man, you gotta ask some questions because you can see this team really struggles with Vince Abukor. Uh, guys, I was doing some research. Vincent Abukor scored I think almost like 10 of the last 10 because I think Henry scored like 14 goals last AFCON. I think he scored at least seven or six of those goals. Just him alone. And the second highest is Ikambi, I think. Ikambi is not even starting. story. So, Rigobert Song, you have to ask questions about his managerial credentials because this Cameroon team, they have a good team on paper. You have Ingisa there, Vincent Abukor there, is there, Chubb Monting is there. I know Monting didn't get called up. Ikambi is there. You know, there are some good players on this team. Hongla is also there as well. This is a good, solid team. But it just feels like, for me, the dressing room is just a problematic. The dressing room is a mess. The team is not organized. They're they're really, really out of shape. And I just think for Cameroon, man, I really worry for them in this. Because if they don't beat G Gambia on the final match day, they're basically out of the AFCON. Anything less than a W, they're out of the AFCON. They need to win that game. As for Senegal, they were great, obviously, on the day. They were fantastic. But like I said, I can't really read too much into Senegal because I feel like for me, Cameroon, I feel like Cameroon was just too easy. I feel like greater tests lie ahead for Senegal, so I don't want to get too excited, too carried away. But, you know, they did play well, of course, in the day. Give them full props. But like I said, for Senegal, man, you can't really judge them for this game. You can't really establish and make criticism because let's be real, guys. Cameroon is awful. Cameroon is an awful team, and you can see how this team is just a mess. So if I'm Rick Bert Song, I'm going to make this controversial decision. You have to bench or not. Onana shouldn't be playing against Gambia. Because I'm telling you this right now, guys. If Onana plays against Gambia, I can one thing ensure you is that Cameroon's not keeping a clean sheet. Cameroon is not going to keep a clean sheet. And Gambia haven't even scored in this year's AFCON. And I wouldn't be surprised if Gambia score on the final match day. Like, I could see a scenario where Cameroon... I could see a scenario where it ends 1-1. And Onana makes a mistake there. And it does terrible. But yeah, I mean, it's it, it's it's really, really, it's really, really bad. Because for me, like I said, guys, I don't think Senegal were that great. I mean, you look at the shots I was taking in this game. Senegal were just clinical with their chances, you know. And um, like I said, man, Senegal, man, they got the three points, a massive three points. And with this win, they're through to round of 16. And and the process are likely going to top this group as well. Because Guinea, Guinea played against Senegal in the final match, day, where Senegal just didn't draw. To be fair, though, if Guinea do win that game, they could go above Senegal. But yeah. Now we'll talk about Guinea, guys. Guinea won, Gambia nil. Oh, man. Guinea, man. This is a very, very solid team. This is a team that presses high. This is a team that creates chances. And remember, guys, they got revenge. They got revenge for last year's AFCON. Because remember, guys, Gambia actually defeated them in the last AFCON edition. Guinea got revenge in this one. So shout out to Guinea, man. They were the much better team on the day. And they should have they should have wrapped this game up. Because like, there were so many chances to, for them to make a 2 Three nil. Like I, the amount of chances they missed, especially in the second half when I was watching the highlights, it was just absolutely shocking. You know, absolutely shocking. So Guinea man, and, and you can see right here, guys. Um, the main man, of course, is on the bench. Gorassi didn't come on. I think what what I think what Gambia was hoping was that we we have Gorassi there as the bench, and probably I don't think it was fully fit. I think he would probably would just rush back in for this game. And the idea was that Gurasi would probably come on the last five minutes. But because Guinea were trying to defend, you know, trying to push for the goal, they didn't need to bring him on. So I, I have a feeling that Gurasi will probably play the final game against Senegal. And, you know, if they can get a draw there, that will be good for them. But, yeah, I mean, for Guinea, man, they were just fantastic in the day. Absolutely fantastic. Um, really, really good performance from them. Uh, Guleva, man, it really God made that great assist for Kamara. Kamara scored. Game, man, the, uh, the goalkeeper for Gambia, I think he could have done better. I think he got a touch on it, and it actually went in. And then obviously Kamara missed a big chance the first half, I believe. And for Gambia, man, they should have wrapped this game up. I think there were several occasions where the guys made a really good assist. Mariba was really good, made a really good assist. And I think the Guinea player was like 1v1, and somebody cleared it off the line. And I think it was Kolo. This Kolo guy has been great. Um, obviously, remember, he played in Syria. He's no longer playing in Syria now. He's now playing at Besiktas. I think he made the goal line clearance right there. You can see he cleared off the line right there. And like I said, man, they created chance after chance after chance. They couldn't finish. And for Guinea, man, my issue for Guinea is that they're a good team, but they got to be more clinical in the final third because you can see right here, guys, 
they should have done better. Like, I'm looking at the chances right here. I'm just going to show you guys real quickly. Um, where is it? Where is the chances they had? Uh, I'm just trying to see what I can find here. Yeah, 44th minute, 33rd minute. Okay, this was... Wait, where is the second half chances? Why is it? Why is the flip mob only showing the first half? Anyways, but yeah, they had a lot of good chances to wrap this game up, and they should have. And look at how many chances they missed. They had six big chances, and they missed all six big of their chances. So for Guinea, man, very, very good win for them. As for Gambia, they were not really great in the day. Guinness didn't get a single shot on target, which is really, really just... I think Borrow had a really good ch 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 chance right at the end, I believe, in stoppage time. And that was probably the best chance they had. So... Uh, for uh, Gambia, man, very, very disappointing for them. I think it's fair to say that they're going to bow out in the group stage. And um, unless they can get something against Cameroon, man, if they can beat Cameroon in the final match today, that may be enough. But like I said, though, it might come down to goal difference. So shout out to Guinea. They got the job done. And as for Gambia, man, very, very disappointing for them. Players that stood out for me for Gam uh, Guinea War, I thought um, Moriba in the midfield was fantastic. I thought the center back partnership was great. Kamaru was obviously great. Bayou, Kohn. You know, everyone, there wasn't really any single bad player, I would say, for Guinea on the day. I think the whole team was really well organized and they did the job. So, hope you guys did enjoy this uh, reaction. And like I said, guys, remember guys to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.